Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the table, the master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The gospel of her of the Lord. The Lord be with you. I start that way this morning because uh, there are some of you that remember me, but uh, most of you probably don't. And uh, I want to assure us of the fact that we enter into this together and that the Lord is with all of us in our gathering and in our deliberation. Last Saturday, uh, it was last Saturday, a week ago, one of the things I usually do every night before I go to bed might not be the best thing to do, but I look at my Facebook. And I was looking at the Facebook, and here there was a person that uh, at least I knew fairly well, and her name is Rebecca Schultz. After I had finished my campus ministry kind of things that I was doing at the time, I did an interim ministry in St. Paul, Minnesota, and uh, in that interim, she was the cantor and the music director. Uh, she had just finished a master's in music and church uh, and uh, liturgy and Luther Seminary in St. Paul. And a uh, very talented, sharp person and a joy to work with. I enjoyed it very much. And in that, I obviously noted who that was and thus was very curious about it. And so I obviously read it. And I want to read it to you tonight or today. Uh, word for word, because uh, I want her to speak for herself. There are many, many preachers furiously, feverishly, and fearfully writing, rewriting sermons. Please send all prayers of courage you can. They have a tough job to do tomorrow morning. And if you find yourself in a pew where the gospel is not preached tomorrow, where evil has not been named, where the side of the oppressed has not been taken, where the oppressor is once again permitted to continue either through silence or seeing both sides, you need to have, to have a come to Jesus talk with your preacher. Our job in the pew is not to just sit and listen. We are called to action as well, and that includes holding our faith leaders accountable to work for justice. Courageous and bold words on her part, and believe me, I'm not being critical of Pastor Paul. I've been here a few uh, times this summer, and I know that he is a very fine preacher. Then after that, I did what most preachers do. I found out that I was going to be preaching here on Sunday, and on Monday, I opened the book and looked at the lessons. And the lessons uh, were the story, if you just heard, the Canaanite woman. And it's a story about boundaries. And my goodness, so much of it relates to, in a variety of ways, things that we have been experiencing, that the world has been experiencing, but we certainly have been experiencing in this country uh, in the last uh, few months and certainly the few weeks. And so uh, I thought that that Facebook certainly fit today as well. 
And then as I was thinking about that some more, then another thing popped into my mind. And that was a hymn that was popular way back in the late 60s, I believe, and early 70s. I don't think the greatest music, but the words are striking. And it says, in Christ there is no east or west. You remember hearing that. In Christ there is no east or west. In him no south or north. But one great fellowship of love throughout the whole wide world. And that is so apropos to what is being spoken about, I think, in that lesson for today as well. So what I sort uh, of felt to be the title for the sermon is a title that kind of says, A Case Study in Boundaryless Living. That was what it is, a case study, because that's the subject, those so were the people that were involved in it, of boundaryless living. Well, and the first part of that, I would like to say, is that in God, there are no boundaries in the God of love. No boundaries. Well, uh, we don't understand or realize or walk in those footsteps and that vision very often. But the vision is there, not only from creation, but the vision is there in the Old Testament as well. And it was read in the uh, first lesson for today of Isaiah. Uh, Isaiah was talking about, the prophet was talking about in God's word, uh, that the people uh, would also come and flock to and become a part of the temple and the house of David, and God would welcome all of them into that house and all would become one community and one grouping of people. Well, the vision goes on, and it goes on, obviously, to us uh, today. And God created that vision once again, and that is for human unity. That that vision that God had... uh, that God created, that God did not expect us to create, but expected us to recognize and also to reflect it in who we are and what we do. And so that becomes a part of that lesson for today. Now, there are ways in which uh, boundaries you know, uh, are, can be understood to still have differences within them, right? There are ways in which there are boundaries, uh, differences. They are uh, honorable differences. Uh, that's part of who we are, again, as the beauty of God's creation. And uh, some of those, for example, are simply who we are. Uh, I am a male. I'm proud of that. I'm a pastor. I'm proud of that and feel good about that. Um, I am a person that likes classical music, and that's all fine, I think, for <laughs> with some people. All of things are good uh, in terms of the diversity, and what's unique about that and what's a challenge about that is that that's the way in which God uh, also created us, and our challenge is to be able to live with the diversity that is good diversity that is part of our unity as one people on this earth. So we try to live that diversity and it be a God-pleasing diversity. And there's nothing wrong beyond those differences unless those differences become scandalous. Unless those differences become idolatrous. And when they become idolatrous, then we have to look out (laughs) for the disunity that gets created. And I have no problem in saying, and I am not proud to say this morning, for example, that white supremacy is not a God-pleasing diversity. (laughs) And that white diversity and white supremacy is a sacrilege and it is idolatrous. And the people of God 
need to be held also accountable and sensitive to and recognize that in their talking and their living out of their Christian faith. Now, there are other differences as well. For example, there are things that we call conventions. You know, the way things are. A lot of times you say, why are they that way? And you don't really know why they're that way. Like you've been going through a process that is trying to, uh, and I take it now as completed, a mission profile. And in the mission profile, you ask yourself probably the question, and at least the call committee was working on it, in terms of who do we say that we are, and then are we really that? And then you ask the question, why are we doing that, or why are we that way? Those are conventions. They emerge, they develop, they're a part of our life together. So we recognize a convention of how we treat one another generally, or how we live out our life in this society, or how we uh, function as a family, all of these things. And then sometimes conventions need to be changed as well and do change. Let's go to the story of the Canaanite woman. <laughs> uh, first, a little bit more about the Canaanite woman. It's mentioned very clearly that it's a Canaanite woman. Uh, let me uh, tap your history, valuable history familiarity a little bit and ask again, do you kind of have a vision of the map of Israel when it comes back pretty narrow at the top, you know, and comes down and there's the Sea of Galilee up here and down here is the Dead Sea. And uh, if you go from the Sea of Galilee toward the ocean, the Mediterranean, and up a ways north, you come to the area that was retired, that was mentioned in the gospel lesson, and that is Tyre and Sidon. And it's referred to also as Phoenicia. And Phoenicia had its uh, strangeness about it. Not only what is a place of pagan gods, pagan gods to the extent that they also sacrifice children uh, to these pagan gods at, at, at different points and in different ways. Uh, all of that emerging within their style and their way of life. So you get the picture of kind of who was discovered as Jesus had left the area of Galilee and went to Tyre and Sidon and then encountered uh, this Canaanite woman in the process. And as he encountered that woman, there was a conversation that obviously happened. Now, some of the conventions and some of the ways in which a way of living emerged comes out of that relationship, uh, that, that way of they conversing and, and, and meeting. Uh, for example, uh, there was a clear understanding of the role in place, for example, of women at that point in time. So you could say, a Canaanite out walking, and you say, gasp, and then you say, my goodness, a Canaanite woman out there walking and talking to someone, nobody else around or no other people except the disciples in Jesus, and you say, oh my goodness, and then talking to a male because she talked to the disciples and she spoke to Jesus. And you say, how outrageous. That's not a part of the way people were living together with one another at that time. And then you have not only that, but the disciples try to tell her, get rid of her. Uh, she's bothering us. And uh, she didn't obey them. And once again, you say, how scandalous. This isn't the way people live out their inner relationship with one another. Uh, these were all things that were being encountered in this encounter. So we have uh, the situation and what happens uh, just before this gospel lesson in chapter 15, also in Matthew, there's a reference there to the disciples. And the disciples came back from some of their uh, missionary kind of trips. They're 
trip of sp uh, spreading the news of Jesus Christ. And as they returned and they made reference to the fact, and Jesus says once again, or they observed, uh, that they had nothing to do with either Gentiles or with Samaritans. And Jesus reminds them of the fact that they were not to, because he says, I have come and you have come. I have come and you have spread the news uh, that I was called to the house of Israel meaning Jews, meaning they were the ones that were being served by the Messiah. Now here we have a few chapters later, and we have a similar situation, and these words repeated. You know, I came not to minister to others, I came to minister to the house of Israel, he tells the Canaanite woman. The Canaanite woman wants something pretty obvious, and it says something about her. She loved her daughter, obviously, who was sick and wanted healing. And the other is she knew something about Jesus, evidently, called him Lord, which would be a Jewish designation for him as Messiah, and called him Lord, and, uh, and, and because of that, obviously felt that somehow he was the one that could bring some healing to her daughter. So here we have the situation, and then... She comes the second time and kneels down bef before Jesus. Now because, again, convention, she knelt down and started talking to him in a conversation, it was okay for him to respond directly to her. And he did that. And uh, then you have that conversation, which is really kind of interesting and strange. <laughs> and that is, again, uh, he says, I, was come, I have come to minister to the house of Israel. And uh, then he says to her uh, that the dogs, you know, eating the crumbs from the table and uh, that you don't eat the, cr the, the crumbs for the ch children. But then she says even the dogs eat some of the crumbs. And uh, obviously that this was a strong statement and that's what follows then by saying, Jesus saying, great is your faith, and it was done for her. But let's go back to the strangeness of that interchange. The strangeness of the interchange was, was Jesus really that insensitive? <laughs> was Jesus really that condescending to her? Was Jesus implying that she was a dog? And are we comfortable with that in terms of our understanding of who this Jesus might actually be and is? Now, there are different ways that that can be interpreted. Some people try to soften it and say that, uh, for example, in Matthew, the word that is used for dog is a, a diminutive. It's a smaller one. So evidently, it's a, it, it, it's a house dog. <laughs> And uh, so that person had a little bit of a different relationship. Or uh, one interesting kind of explanation is that to say that Jesus himself was a human being, sinless, but a human being. And he grew up and expanded his understanding and knowledge also of his mission, which initially was to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But then in that dialogue with this woman, perhaps he himself came to a different understanding. And in a sense, she won the dialogue. And he is uh, understanding that his mission is expanding to a much broader base, in fact, as to the whole world. Well, that's one other interpretation. I want to give you one more. <laughs> and that is that the disciples came to Jesus and what did they say? Get rid of this woman. <laughs> She's messing things up. And, uh, and, 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 and remember in chapter 10, uh, it was said that he is there to minister to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And uh, that sounds like he at least was, uh, was in, 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 in agreement with the understanding of what that was. So he should have agreed with the disciples. But 
before she comes and kneels before Jesus, he answers her, but he doesn't answer the woman. He turns to the disciples. And when he turns to the disciples, he is repeating this same statement. I have come to minister to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And in that process, what he is doing is then the dialogue happens, which she says, but even they get the crumbs from the table. The understanding is that the love and grace of God is so much broader and is so all-embracive that it includes, yes, even this Canaanite woman. Boundaryless, boundaryless love, that's what God is all about. Remember this last week, or two days ago, I guess, the woman, the young woman that was uh, killed at the event or situation in Charlottesville. Remember her name was Heather, Heather Heyer. And her mother spoke, I don't know if you recall that or watched any of that, but her mother spoke at the memorial service. And she said an interesting thing. She said, uh, you all should find what you can do and look for what you can do to make a difference. And she said, I surely would rather still have my daughter, but not having her by golly, I want that her life not be wasted. That her life not be wasted in our commitment to an understanding of the whole world of justice that is part of the vision of God's kingdom. The whole thing about not having boundaries, but that in Christ there is no east or west, in him no north or south, but one great fellowship of love, for all the whole world wide over. There's a book by the name, and from Barbara Brown Taylor, who's one of the best known preachers in the country right now. Uh, she also teaches at a seminary in Georgia. And she, uh, she remarked about this woman and this story. And she ended it by this way. And again, I'm going to read it because I want her words to speak. They're so powerful. Let go. Step out. Look a Canaanite in the eye. Knock on a strange door. Ask an outsider what his life is like. Trespass an old boundary. Enter a new relationship. Push a limit. Take a risk. Give up, give up playing safe. You have nothing to lose but your life the way it has been. And there's a lot more life where that came from. And if you get scared, which you will, and if you get mad, which you probably will too, remember today's story. With Jesus as our model and our Lord, we are called to step over the lines we have drawn for ourselves, not because we have to and not because we ought to, or even because we want to, but because we know that it is God's own self who waits for us on the other side. The crumbs that fall from the table are powerful crumbs, and the woman's daughter was healed. Healing love touched her and touched them both. As we come to the table today, we come to get our crumb. <laughs> there is bread here. We receive it and take it, and it has the power of the embodied God of love within it to transform us and to make us people who want to live the life of boundaryless giving, the vision of God's kingdom. And remember, the crumbs are that powerful, especially if they do fall from the master's table. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
We rise to confess our faith in the words of the Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ as God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge. judge. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Generous, compassionate God, we gather before you to pray for your church, your world, and all who are in need. Unite us, holy God, so that all who worship receive assurance and nourishment by faith. Rescue those who suffer from religious persecution. Rescue those who suffer in living a life without faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Teach us, holy God. Your eternal power and your divine nature are revealed in all that you have created. Help us, Lord, to be better stewards of all your creation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Empower us, holy God. Empower us to advocate for those on the margins. Open the hearts of leaders in every nation to serve those who are most vulnerable. Cause us, your church, to seek justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Equip us, holy God. Equip us with your love for our brothers and sisters. Heal the sick, comfort the grieving, feed the hungry, and calm those in distress. Holy God, you know the needs of all these whose names are written in this, our book of prayer. Do for them, Lord, according to your good and perfect will. Bless them, Lord. Bless them and the names and the individuals who wrote them. We especially lift up to you, Lord, these servants here at Gloria Day, Neil, Marcia, and Mitch Bosey, Carolyn Borchard, Rob, Denish, Megan, and Andrew Bosma, ba- Bonnie and Bruce Bastian, Linda Botkin. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Rouse us, holy God. Stir us up to praise you with gladness. We give thanks for musicians, worship leaders, ushers, readers, prayer warriors, those who prepare and serve at communion, and all who make our worship experience an expression of our love, joy, and praise of you. Move in the hearts of your faithful people here to continue to meet the various service needs each week. Move in the hearts of your faithful people here to be people of prayer, growing in faith and trusting in your good and perfect will for us. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks, O God, for the saints who have deepened our lives of prayer. Gather us with them in endless praise of you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. These and whatever other prayers uh, that you would have us give and that people have need, we place before you in the name of Jesus our Savior, knowing that you will hear and you will answer. Lord, in your mercy. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us offer to each other the sign of peace. Peace to you. Peace to you. Peace to you. Okay, peace to you. 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 I just got it. Peace to you. Peace to you.
Gather us in, the lost and forsaken. Gather us in, the blind and the lame. Call to us now, and we shall awaken.